Hey guys, and welcome to another one of my tutorials. So in this video, I thought I'd do something a little bit different and show you guys how to create a cool little maze game like this. So you can see in the bottom left, there is this little metal ball and I can tilt the board around. I'm sure you guys have seen games like this before. And the idea is that you have to get it to that little green cylinder at the end. Uh, I won't go through the whole maze because it does take a while, but basically once you get to the end, the ball just resets to the start. And if you jolt it too much and it falls off the edge, it will also reset to the start. Let me see if I can get it to go off the edge. There we go. So then you can see it just restarts. And that's basically what happens when you get to the end. Um, and so that's uh, the whole game. So I'll be showing you guys how to set this up from scratch. So with that being said, let's just go ahead and jump right into it. So open up the Epic Game Launcher, because uh, we'll be doing this from scratch. I'm on version 4.26.1. So go ahead and launch whatever version you're on. It shouldn't really matter. We're not doing anything too crazy if you're on an older version. And then we want to select games down here and then hit next. And then we're actually going to be using the blank template for this and just doing everything from scratch here. So select blank and then hit next. And then make sure you have blueprints selected and make sure you have with starter content selected. And then you can name it whatever you want. I'm just going to call it maze tutorial and then go ahead and create the project. And then while that's creating, I'm gonna move this over here to my other screen. And we'll just wait a second for this to open. And there we go. Okay, so you can see it's not totally empty, so we just need to delete this stuff real quick. So click on all of this geometry, make sure you get this little lamp up here too, and just delete them from the scene. Uh, we can also delete, actually, that's probably good. Um, okay, so the first thing we need to do is actually create our board. And we're, the way we're going to be doing that is through BSP brushes, which are these things over here. So if you come over to geometry, we want to select box. And so just take the box and drag it anywhere into the world. And then to make things easier on ourselves, let's set the location of this to 0, 0, 0. So that way it's right at the origin. And then let's kind of get behind it here so that the red arrow is facing away from us. And so this will kind of be the way we're looking at the board. So the ball is going to start down here in the bottom left, and it's going to end up here at the, at the top right. All right, so the first thing we need to do is make this flat so that it actually looks like a base of a board here. Um, let me see. Um, Trying to look at what I did on my other projects so I can get the numbers the same. Um, okay, so down here, don't mess with the scale, but down here where we have the brush settings, we want to set it to a thousand on the X, a thousand on the Y, and 20 on the Z. So that you get this nice flat surface here. And then from there, we can hold down Alt and drag this up. And I'll create a new one. Except for this one, we want to set it to um, 20 on the X. And so this is going to be our edge. And we can drag this over here and then snap it down here right on the edge. And then again, we can hold down Alt and drag and move this guy over here. And make sure again it lines up on the edge and then alt drag again to make a new one and then let go and then we can rotate this 90 degrees and scoot it back here so we're basically just making the edges of the board i'm not going to make anything too crazy um, just a simple little board for the tutorial but you guys can um, feel free to make it as complex as you want and then again alt drag to create this side and there we go so this is everything we need for our board. And again, make sure we're kind of looking at it from this angle where we're behind or the, the red arrow is facing away from us. And then from here, we can add some obstacles. So I'm just gonna add a few. I'm not gonna make it as intense as the one that I showed at the beginning, just for the sake of time. So I'm just gonna alt drag and maybe alt drag one more time. And then I'll do the same for this side, just so we have a little bit of a challenge. And then in order to add breaks in the geometry, um, we can actually use subtractive brushes. So again, I'm just going to alt drag off of this to create a new one. And then over here on the right, I'm gonna switch this guy to subtractive. 
And you'll see that actually causes it to cut through other geometry. And I'm gonna set the size to 40 by 40. So now we have this little piece of geometry that will actually cut through other pieces of geometry. So our ball is gonna start down here in the bottom left. So we need to make a path for it. So I'm just gonna drag this over here. And you can see when I do that, it creates a hole wherever I leave it. So maybe we want it like over here on the left or something. And then you kind of get the idea. So you can just alt drag to create a new one of these and then put it wherever you want. So I'm just gonna make a really simple path here real quick. Alt drag and like that. So this is a pretty bad maze because it doesn't even use these most of these boxes, but you get the idea. You can set it up however you want um, and make it as complex as you want. But at this point, we can go ahead and create this or merge this into its own static mesh that we can actually use for the board. So to do that, because um, right now it's a bunch of different pieces, right? So what we want to do is we want to come to a top view of it. And then we can hold down Control and Alt on the keyboard and then select everything using the box selector. And so this selected a lot more than we wanted because it selected like everything that was in the scene. So we just want to come over here um, on the right and scroll up and we want to control and left click like, you know, everything but the board pieces. So all these lights and the player start and the sphere capture and then the skybox we obviously don't want. It should look like brush, we should have a bunch of brushes in there and we obviously don't put this sphere reflection capture. So now we have just the board selected. And so what we can do is we can um, create a static mesh from it. But one thing we're going to need to do before we do that is we need to make sure that the origin of the board is right in the middle. So that way when we rotate it, it will rotate correctly. And if we were to create the static mesh right now, it would create the origin right here because that's where the that's the last piece we have selected. So we want to control left click on the board and then do it again. Uh, that's didn't work. How do we, oh, there we go. Okay, so you want to control left click on this board. You might have to do it two or three times to get it set up, but basically you want the last piece that's selected to be the base of the board. So that way you have this little widget thing right here in the middle of the board. And then again, just make sure all the brushes are selected over here, which they are. And then what we can do is in the details panel, if we scroll down to brush settings, I think, and then hit this drop down, you'll see a create static mesh. If you don't see this here, that means that you have something else up here in your world outliner selected that's not a brush. See, if I if I select the sphere capture, for example, then none of that shows. So they, you need to only have brushes selected. Um, so make sure you have that set. And then again, make sure the origin's in the middle. And then you can hit this create static mesh. And that's going to ask you where do you want to put it. So let's just select the content folder. And then what do you want to name it? And we'll just call it sm underscore board and then go ahead and create the static mesh. Although I am thinking, um, so if you do this, it's going to replace everything you have here. So actually a better idea before we press create, if we just hold down alt and drag, it's gonna create a totally new copy of this entire board. And then again, let's control and left click to get the origin back in the middle. And so now we can create one off of this and it won't affect this guy so that if we come back and we want to make modifications to it, we can. So off of the duplicate, um, let's just create it from there. So we'll say create static mesh. And then again, to content folder and we'll call it sm underscore board and then create the static mesh. So you can see, like I was saying, it created a totally new one. It got rid of the thing we had here before. And now we just have one static mesh and you can see the origin is right in the middle of the static mesh, which is good but we still have this other one over here that's made up of a bunch of pieces. So if we want to change it later, we can. Okay, so now we have the board created. Um, let's see. The next thing we want to do is create the blueprint for the board itself. So in the content folder, let's right click and say blueprint class. And we're actually going to create a pawn because we're going to be possessing this so we can control it. So we'll create a pawn and we'll call it BP underscore maze. And then let's open this guy up. So inside of here, actually, I'm just gonna dock this to the top here so it makes it a little easier. So inside of here, we obviously wanna add a static mesh for our board. So let's say add component and search for static mesh. And we will call this the um, board mesh. And then over here on the right, we can select our SM underscore board. And you can see if we do that, it populates um, in the viewport with our board. And then the other thing we want to add is a camera. So up here, let's select camera and select that. 
And then make sure when you add the camera that you don't do what I did and that you actually add it as a child of the default scene root. So I'm gonna drag this onto the default scene root and say attach. And so that way the, the static mesh and the camera are both children of the default scene root, but the camera should not be a child of the board mesh. Otherwise, when you rotate the board, the camera is gonna rotate with it and it's gonna look really weird. All right, so on this camera, if we select this, we wanna kind of move it back and up. So I'm just gonna copy the values I have in my other one. So I did uh, 539 to move it up and then negative 870 to move it backwards. You can see now it's back here. And then we wanna rotate a little bit so it's looking down. So we'll say negative 30. You can see now it's kind of has a, a more broad view of the maze. And then I think that's probably good for now. So let's go back to our um, this window here. And then let's drag in our BP maze. So we can drag this in wherever we want. So I want to leave this stuff here at the origin just because it's easier for creating. So let's just do this over here to the side. So I'm just going to drag in the BP maze. Just somewhere over here to the left. Doesn't really matter. I'm going to scoot it over just so you can't see the other board in the picture. And there we go. And then also what we want to do is we want to select this guy and then in the details panel, let me close this. Under auto possess player, we want to set it to player zero. So that way when you press play, it will auto possess this camera. So if we go ahead and press play now, you can see we are in control of this pawn. So the pawn is the board and it's automatically using that camera we created for it. Um, so right now we don't have any controls to rotate it, but once we add those, it will start rotating this board. Okay. So the next thing we need is, I guess we can do, let's do the rotational controls for first and then we'll start working on the ball and the goal. So back in BP Maze, uh, let's see, in the event graph, we can just delete this stuff because we don't really need any of this. Um, we wanna add two events in here, one for tilting forward and one for tilting right. Uh, so in order to do that, actually, we need to go to the project settings. So go to edit project settings and we want to add a new input. So come down here to input and select this. And we want to add two input mappings. So, or axis mappings rather. So hit this plus button and now add a new axis mapping. And so we want one for tilt right, so we'll say tilt right. And then for the key, we want it to be mouse. X. So basically the left and right movement of the mouse is going to tilt it left and right. And then we want to add one for up and down or forward and backwards. So we'll hit this again and we'll say tilt forward. And then of course this will be mouse Y. Uh, for this one, we actually want to change the scale to negative one because when we push the mouse forward, we actually want the board to tilt um, forward as well. And if we leave it as positive one, it's going to tilt the opposite direction. You'll see what I mean once we get it running, but we want this to be a negative one. Okay, and now back in our maze, we can right click and say event, or what's it called? Input axis tilt forward. And so we wanna select this one up here. And then we can do the same thing for tilt right. So input axis tilt right. So basically, if you're not familiar with input axis or events, uh, this one's going to get called whenever, well, it's going to get called every frame. And this axis value is how much the mouse has changed on the um, forward axis, so up and down. And then same for this one, but for left and right with the mouse. So this is going to be a value between 0 and 1, or negative 1 and positive 1, rather. So we want to take this value and adjust the rotation of the board by it. So we can drag in our board mesh, and we can say add world rotation and then for tilting forward which is up and down on the mouse we want to only adjust the pitch of the board so we can right click and split this and so now we have roll pitch and y'all so we only want to adjust the pitch and we want to adjust it by however much this axis value is so we could just pass this in right here but if we do that then we won't really be able to control the speed of the rotation and so in order to do that we want to multiply this so we'll say float multiply and we'll hook this in here to the pitch. And so we wanna hook up something here. So whatever we pass in here is gonna be the speed of the rotation. So I'm gonna make this into a variable. So I'm just gonna right click and say promote to variable. And that will add me a little variable over here. And we will just call this rotation speed. 
And then if we compile it, we can set the default value. And I'm gonna set it to 0.15. So you can play with this value. Obviously, the higher you make this, the faster the board will rotate when you rotate the mouse. Um, but for now, this is good. So that's gonna rotate it. Um, and if we go ahead and we test this out, just so you can kind of see what's going on here. If I rotate the mouse forward, you can see it rotates the board forward and backwards. But there's one obvious problem, and that is that it rotates way too much. Like there's no limit to it. So we want to limit the rotation. So to do that, we can get our board mesh again after we do this. And we can say get world rotation. And we want to split this because we want to look at the pitch, because that's the thing we're concerned about right now. And we want to say board mesh, set world rotation. And so since we only care about pitch, um, we can actually just go ahead and split this again. And we can pass in the roll and the yaw because we don't want those to change. But for the pitch, we want to clamp it. And we want to clamp it between you know, some small angle, like negative 5 and positive 5. So that way it can only rotate a total of 10 degrees. So we can drag off of this, and we can say clamp, float. And then whatever values you pass here is however much it's going to be allowed to rotate. So I'm going to say negative 5 and positive 5, but you can change these to make them bigger if you want the board to rotate more. Or if you make them smaller, then the board will rotate, obviously, a lot less. And so now if we run this and we try to rotate our board, you can see it stops rotating once we get to 5 degrees in either direction. And so that's our tilting forward and backwards. The next thing we need to do is our tilting left and right. So it's going to be very similar, except the one main difference is instead of doing world rotation, we're going to do local rotation. And I guess I can show you what happens if we use world rotation real quick. So because that'll be easy. So I'm just going to copy all this um, just to show you kind of the problem and paste it down here. And then instead of messing with the pitch, we want to mess with the roll. So if you hold down control, you can drag this to a different pin. So I'm going to drag it up to roll. And then make sure you hook this up as well so that the axis value goes in multiply. And then for this one, of course, we just want to change it so that roll goes down here and that pitch goes up here. And then this should go into roll as well. So we have roll going through the clamp, but pitch and y'all go directly across. Um, and you can see if I run this and I move my mouse left and right, it seems to be working fine. But if I start like just moving the mouse crazy around, you can see the board actually starts to like rotate um, in a direction we don't want it to, because because we're moving the world rotation for the pitch and the roll, it's causing it to actually like get off axis. So really, what we want to do is we want to make it so that only the pitch affects the world. And whenever we roll, that only affects the local roll. So instead of doing add world rotation, we can delete this. And we want to say add local rotation. But everything else is going to stay the same. So we can split this. And of course, this goes back into our roll. And then down here, uh, we want to chain cook this up again. So instead of saying get world rotation, we want to say get relative rotation which is basically the same thing as the local rotation. And we can split this and our roll is going to go into here and our pitch and pitch are going to go into here and we can delete this. And then, oh, one more thing. So we want to set relative rotation instead of world rotation. So we can drag off a board mesh and say set relative rotation and we can split this. And then these pens, we just want to move over. So roll is going to go into roll pitch into pitch, and y'all into y'all. OK, so I'll just recap real quick since I know that was a little fast. So starting over here on the left, make sure you have the axis value going into the rotation speed, and they're being multiplied. And then we're using add local rotation for the roll. And then after that, we want to say get relative rotation for the board mesh. And we want to clamp that again between negative 5 and 5, or whatever values you want. And then finally, we're saying set relative rotation on the board mesh, and we're only affecting the roll. So now if we did everything right, we can go left and right, go forward and backwards. But if we move the mouse crazy around, you can see the board never the board never rolls, or like you know, it never actually rotates left and right like it was before. And that's because we are only affecting the world rotation for the pitch. 
Okay, so now that we have the rotation working for the board, we can start adding in the ball. Um, one other thing you can do to make it look a little nicer is if you select the board mesh and you come over here to the material and you look for wood. I think I used this pine one. And if we select that, you can see now we have this nice kind of wooden texture just to make it a little more realistic. Okay, so now let's actually start working on the ball. So come back here. We can right click and say create blueprint class. And this is going to be of type actor. So select actor and we will call it BP underscore ball. And then if we open this guy up, we want to start adding some components. Actually, I think we only need one for this one. Um, we just need a static mesh to represent the ball. So we can say add component and we can look for static mesh and we can add that. And then we actually don't need this default scenery. So we can just take the static mesh and drag it on top of it. Like so. And then for the static mesh over here on the right, we can search for shape underscore sphere. If you don't see this, that's probably because you don't have the starter content. Um, so if you don't if you don't see this, well, let me just select this real quick. Um, if you don't see this, you can add starter content to your project by going to add import and then add feature or content pack and then content packs and selecting starter content right here and say add to project. But we already have it, so we don't need that. So what we want to do is we want to just make this ball a little bit smaller because right now it's going to be a little bit big. So we can set the scale to like 0 0.25, 0 0.25, and 0 0.25. And so there is our ball. And then we also want to change a couple of the settings. So over here, if we search for simulate physics, we want to make sure that this is checked because obviously the ball needs to be simulating physics. And then if we close this and we scroll down to collision, make sure that the collision preset is set to physics actor. It looks like it did it for me whenever I selected that checkbox, but make sure you have, again, make sure you have this set to physics actor, otherwise it won't quite work. And then also just to make it look a little nicer, we can change the material to chrome. This, uh, I'll use M underscore chrome ball. You can see it turns into a nice metal chrome color. And so now if we take this ball and we drag it into our scene and we can just drag it to wherever we want it to start at. So I'm gonna drag it like right here and you wanna put it a little bit above the board. So that way when it restarts, if the board is kind of tilted upwards, it will still fall on top of the board. And so, oops, files are wrong. So if we press play now, oh, you can see it falls right through the board. And the reason that's happening is because the board currently doesn't have any collision on it. So we just need to fix that real quick. So if we go to our SM board down here and open this up, um, you can see it doesn't have any collision, but if you go into collision and you say simple collision, you can see nothing shows up. But if you select complex collision, then you can see now it shows the collision for the board. And so the reason it's not working is because it doesn't actually have any simple collision, right? There is no simple collision here. Um, so we just need to tell the engine that for this specific model, we want to use the complex collision as the simple collision because the simple collision is what it uses for physics collisions. So if we come over here in the details panel and we scroll down this collision complexity, we want to set it to use complex collision as simple. And you can see when I do that, it shows up um, the collision lines when I have simple collision. So now it's showing that there is actually collision. And also make sure that this is set to block all. It should be block all by default, but just make sure that's set. And now if we come back here and we hit play, you can see it falls and it rolls around on the board. So one other thing I did in the project to make it a little bit more realistic looking is I kind of tweaked the gravity a little bit um, because I thought the gravity didn't really look super realistic. So if you go to the world settings here and you search for gravity, you can say override gravity and I'm going to override it to negative 2000 and that kind of gives the ball a little more weight to it. I kind of thought it felt a little bit floaty. And so now if you press play, you can see it falls more like I would expect it to fall. Um, you can play with that value if you want. The other thing you notice is there's no shadow on the ball. And I looked up like why this is happening, but it basically has, it has to do with small objects. Apparently Unreal doesn't like rendering shadows for small objects. Um, but one little fix I was able to do for that, if you go to the ball and you search for bounds, you can increase the size of the bounds, and that's sort of is like how big Unreal thinks the object is. So if you make it think the object is bigger, then it's going to render a shadow for it more likely. So if you set it to like four, and compile save, you can see now we have a bit of a shadow for it, which makes it look a lot nicer because it looks more like it's grounded there. 
Um, but anyway, so we can obviously roll it around and we can go through these little holes, which is kind of tricky. There we go. And so we want to make it so that when we get to that top right square, um, there's a little goal that we can go through. And when we hit the goal, it's going to reset the ball to the bottom left. Okay, so let's see. And we also need to make it so that the ball falls off, it resets to the start. So maybe we should do that first. Um, so let's do that inside of the box. That's actually pretty simple. So in the event graph, let's delete these. Actually, delete the begin overlap because we don't need that one. So for begin play, we basically want to save the location that the ball starts at. So you can see if we come back here. So the ball starts like right here, right? So we just want to save that location so that way if we win or if the ball falls off the board, then we can reset the ball to this location. So in the begin play, we can just real simply say, uh, get actor location, and then we can promote this to a variable and hook that up. And then we will call this the starting location. And then I'm going to set this to private since nobody else needs access to it. And then I also like to turn on um, show access specifier. So if we click this, you can see it adds private or public in front of things. You don't have to do that. It's just a nice thing, in my opinion, to see what's private and what's public. Um, so anyway, so we got the starting location saved. And the next thing we want to do is we want to do something in the tick to check the height of the ball. Because if the height of the ball ever gets below a certain point, then we want to reset the ball to the starting location. So we can say get actor location. And the best way to figure out what this value should be is to just print out this value and take a look at what it is. So if we do that, we can just split this. We want to look at the Z value, obviously. I'm just going to add a quick little print string here and hook this up. And so now if we run it, it's going to be printing out the Z value of the ball. So I happen to drag my board to a height of 330, but yours could be different. Like it totally doesn't matter what height it is. You just want to set a value that's relative to this. So a good way to find it is to like tilt the board all the way to one side. So it seems like the lowest the ball can get is around 270. So if we set the kill height of the ball to be like, you know, 200, then that should be plenty low enough for it to reset. So Let's just say 200 is our value. So we'll say if, if this is less than 200. And you could definitely make this a variable and make it configurable, which maybe we should probably do. So if we, let's do it. So if we put this through a variable, we can just say kill height. And then we can make it private, blueprint read only, and instance editable. And then when we do that, you can see if we come back here to our screen, if we click on our maze, we can really easily change this value. Um, or not the maze, the ball, sorry. If we click on the ball, we can really easily change the kill height right here. So that way, if we move the board up, we can just change it right here without having to open up the blueprint. Um, so if it's less than our kill height, and we want to do a branch, and we want to reset the ball. So I'm going to make a little function for this. So we'll say function, and we'll say reset ball. And I'm going to make this private as well, because we don't want it to be called from outside the class. So inside here, we want to do two things. We want to set the actor location, which is the ball. We want to set the ball's location to the ball's starting location. So that's really easy. So we'll just say set actor location. And look this up. Uh, but if we do that and we don't do anything else, then if the ball's falling really fast, then when it changes locations, it's going to continue to fall really fast. So we want to basically stop its velocity. So we can say, Static mesh, which is our ball mesh. Maybe we should rename this. Let's just call this ball mesh. So we'll say ball mesh set physics linear velocity. Uh, this one. And we just want to set it to zero, 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 so that way it loses all velocity. And then back in our event graph, we can just say reset ball and hook that up to the true. So now if we run this, and let's try to get the ball to fall off the table. So I just kind of do this. You can see it falls off, and then it immediately comes back to the starting spot. Seems to be working good. All right, and then the next thing we want to do is, let's see. The next thing we want to do is hook up the goal. So we want to make it so that when we get up here to the top right, there's a little goal thing that we can see, and when we get there, it should complete and we should win the game. So I think I'm actually going to do that in part two, just because this video is getting really long. So I'll see you guys in part two.